land. So how do air traffic controllers keep planes moving quickly, safely and on schedule? How do they do it? Hong Kong, one of the busiest ports in the world, and now Hong Kong Airport, again one of the busiest. Every day, an average 1,250 aircraft take off and land here, making it the fifth busiest airport in the world. And every single plane arriving and departing is handled by a team of 250 air traffic controllers. It's a job that requires a remarkable degree of skill and incredible attention to detail because at any one time they could be handling up to 12 aircraft. We have to ensure that all aircraft are well separated according to the regulations because even though it's like a chessboard, there are hundreds of lives on, the, on board on each aircraft. High in the skies is Cathay Pacific Flight 407. It's en route to Hong Kong from Taiwan. On board, are over 200 passengers who will shortly join the 37 million other passengers who pass through Hong Kong Airport every year. Their lives are in the hands of the air traffic controllers who must ensure the safe takeoff and landing of every plane at Hong Kong. Air Macau 661 Roger, contact departure 123 base 08. Good day. In front of each controller is a radar screen, a two-dimensional picture of the skies above them. Despite all the technology around them, they still rely on batons to help them complete the job. They may be low-tech, but they're the fail-safe system in case the computers crash. The controllers have to think bigger than 2D. They have to juggle distance, space and time as they translate the blips on their screen into a mental image. Back in the skies, Flight 407 is getting closer to its destination. Approximately 200 miles from Hong Kong Airport, it makes its first contact with air traffic control. Cafe 407, Hong Kong radar, good morning, identified. Clear Yelato 1 Alpha, arrival, runway 07 left, cancel speed restriction at Mallon. Now, a relay race of command springs into operation. It begins with the windowless bunker of the air traffic control center. Here, the central controller is the first person the pilot speaks to. He directs the plane towards the airport, merging all descending aircraft into a single file as they approach. My responsibility is to bring the aircraft from each uh, entry point from uh, adjacent airspace to integrate into a stream and to hand off to the approach suite in the proper sequence and spacing. The controller instructs the pilot on speed, altitude and weather. If the airport is too busy, he can put the aircraft into a holding pattern until space is available. Once Flight 707's landing slot is clear, the central controller's job is complete. Around 40 miles from the airport, he hands over to the approach controller. The SD area controller Pass me the aircraft, the Cathay 407. I take the Cathay 407 to a lower level. And, and on the other hand, there are a lot of Hong Kong departure coming through the airspace. I need to separate those departure aircraft with the arrival aircraft. As the plane nears the airport, the gap between it and the plane in front narrows. Now they're separated by just over two miles. It may seem a lot, but they're actually just 15 to 20 seconds apart, so each decision by the controller becomes ever more crucial. The approach controller uses a radar approach system that displays the flight number, speed, altitude and carrier. As soon as the plane has safely made it to within 40 kilometers of the airport, the radar screen flashes green. The next stage of the journey is about to begin.
Now the flight is passed from the windowless control room to the control tower. As a tower controller, basically we um, receive the plane at about 8 nautical miles from the aerodrome and uh, we talk to them, giving a landing clearance on the runway and then we will pass it on, and once they vacate the runway, we will pass it on to the ground controller. With every moment and decision now critical, the tower controller has an additional piece of equipment to help her, her eyes. Seeing out windows improve my reaction and of course it's an enjoyment too. It's this all about the job, looking out at the window, looking at the aeroplane, looking at the weather. Flight 407 makes its final approach. As soon as the plane touches down, the ground controller takes over. The final leg of the relay is just as vital as any of the others. The world's worst aircraft disaster back in 1977 didn't happen in the skies. It happened on the ground when two jumbo jets collided at Tenerife Airport, killing almost 600 passengers. You know, as a uh, ground movement controller, my duties are to move aircraft along the taxiways to the parking stands or on the other way, uh, move the aircraft from the parking stands, start up to take off in the one way and over to the control tower. Now that Flight 407 has landed safely, its passengers gather their luggage and go their own ways. But for the air traffic controllers, the whole process never stops as they juggle more approaching and departing aircraft and continue to play a vital but rarely seen role in speeding you safely to your destination.